In the space of just a few years, Oracle has managed to alienate a whole community of Java developers by putting profits over people. When they realized their mistake, they tried to backtrack. For many, it was too little too late. They'll use someone else's software to run Java. Thank you very much. Can Oracle still be trusted? Let me tell you this whole crazy story, then you can decide for yourself. It starts back in 2017. Until this time, Java developers across the world had been using the Oracle JDK, the Java Development Kit, to develop software and run it in production. The Oracle JDK was tried and tested and was effectively the gold standard of JDKs. Of course, Oracle are the ones behind Java, having in 2010 acquired Sun Microsystems, the original creators of the language. So it made complete sense that Oracle would offer you the tools you'd need to develop and run Java programs. Everyone knew it made sense and nobody questioned it. Well, except perhaps for those working at Oracle, because in September 2017, Donald Smith, Oracle's Senior Director of Product Management, wrote this official blog post. It sounded innocent enough on the surface, but contained a nasty bombshell within. Specifically, the Oracle JDK will primarily be for commercial and support customers once open JDK binaries are interchangeable with the Oracle JDK. The beloved free Oracle-backed JDK would be no more. When Java 11 was released later the following year, to use the Oracle JDK in production would require purchase of a Java SE subscription. At over £200 per CPU per year, this would be too much of a stretch for many. People had been used to deploying Java applications in production for free for so long. So surely there was an alternative? Well, actually yes, but not one without issues. Since 2006, Sun, then Oracle, had been working on open sourcing the entire JDK. This project, known as OpenJDK, allowed external contributions to be made to the Java source code and for anyone to create and distribute their own JDK builds, thanks to the open source license. Alongside builds for Oracle JDK, Oracle also produced Oracle OpenJDK builds. Note the subtle difference in naming. By Java 11, Oracle and other contributors like Red Hat had improved OpenJDK to the point where Oracle OpenJDK builds were functionally equivalent to Oracle JDK builds. They even included previous commercial-only features like Flight Recorder. So if Oracle was starting to charge to use Oracle JDK, why not just use Oracle OpenJDK instead? To understand why, think of a JDK build for a specific Java version, like a leaky bucket. And although it can still hold some water, vulnerabilities and bugs may be found which need to be plugged. If that happens, the leak stops and everyone's happy. The way these issues get fixed is through updates. So if you're on Oracle Open JDK 18, for example, there could be occasional updates released. And in theory, as highly engaged developers, we know about and immediately deploy these updates to our production servers. <laughs> but the problem with Oracle Open JDK is that the time period for which these updates are provided is tiny, minuscule in fact. New versions of Java are now released every six months. As soon as the next version comes out, Oracle stop producing their OpenJDK builds for the old version. And that even applies for the LTS, the so-called long-term support versions, like Java 8, 11, and 17. That's quite different to how updates to Oracle JDK work, which typically last for several years for LTS versions. So with these Oracle OpenJDK builds, if you want to keep getting important updates, you have to jump to the next Java version as soon as it's released. Most of us aren't willing to do that because, well, we've got features to deliver. Talk to the hand. This is where we were in 2019. Nobody wanted to throw money at Oracle to get the Oracle JDK and its updates, but the free Oracle OpenJDK updates were only for six months. That's when some other players joined the game and things started to get interesting. You see, the OpenJDK license allowed anyone to create a JDK build and distribute it. Other organizations started popping up to do just that. These third-party JDK vendors, as we'll call them, offered their own free OpenJDK builds for anyone to download, but with an important difference. Unlike Oracle OpenJDK, 
These builds would come with a long update period. Rather than getting only six months of important bug and security fixes for a specific Java version, they promised years. By 2021, the most popular JDK used in production would be one of these builds, Eclipse Temurin OpenJDK by Adoptium. Version 17 of this JDK offers updates until at least 2027, and all totally free. Of course, there are other vendors, at least 20 in fact. The most popular have zany sounding names like Azul Zulu and Amazon Cornetto. Oh, sorry, I mean Coretto. Developers embraced these alternative JDKs and did the tedious work to migrate away from Oracle JDK. So it wasn't surprising when the once untouchable Oracle JDK was relegated to third place. But you won't believe what Oracle did next. In September 2021, our main man at Oracle put out another official blog post, introducing the free Java license. This was a massive backtrack from their previous stance. After receiving feedback from developers, they would be making the Oracle JDK free again from version 17 onwards, even for production use. And unlike their open JDK builds, Oracle would provide updates for LTS versions for at least one year after the subsequent LTS version. I know you just couldn't make this stuff up, but were developers about to jump back to the Oracle JDK? No way, not after all that work they'd just done to migrate away from it. In fact, they were fuming. This Reddit post best shows how developers felt after the announcement. With so many changes to licenses, people had started to lose trust in Oracle. But at least we now have another JDK to choose from. Surely that's a good thing. Well, yes, but even IntelliJ Idea, the IDE darling of Java developers, wasn't about to offer any help promoting Oracle JDK 17. In this IDE, the Download JDK dialog lets you quickly download a specific JDK version and vendor. When someone requested to add Oracle JDK back into the dialog, it was refused. Instead, they suggested to please use Adopt OpenJDK builds instead. From my perspective, I'm not sure whether this move away from Oracle JDK is actually a problem for Oracle. I mean, they still have their Java SE subscription product, which I've never used, but it's got some pretty positive reviews. I'd say the most obvious conclusion to draw from all this is that when Oracle originally decided to make Oracle JDK paid, they made the mistake of putting profit above the development community. And when they saw the backlash, they did an about turn to try to get into people's good books again. Would I use Oracle JDK again? Yes, but probably not until it's added back into IntelliJ IDEA. Mistakes have been made, but I'm willing to forgive and forget. What do you think? Can you still trust Oracle? Leave a comment below to let me know your thoughts. Until next time. <laughs>